welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, uh, I think two weeks. Yes, I have not been so well. I had a red eye. My right eye was red. I had a, a pimple right here on my lip and I had a cough. I'm going to be telling you facts that you need to know about marriage before you get into marriage. Yes, I'm still preparing you for marriage. Most of my videos are definitely about relationships and marriage. So I pick out and look out for those topics, for that content, information that you need to know in relationships, before relationships, in marriage, before marriage. Yeah, everything about the in-between and around relationships and marriage. So as usual, I like to note down in my blue book right here. This is my content book. Please don't steal it. Yeah, so I like to note down things so I don't leave out anything that I deem important or necessary for you to know. There are more like warnings before you get married or facts you need to know before you get married. Number one, provision is no longer for the man alone, but rather for both woman and man or wife and husband to bring together their monies, you know, put them to table and agree on how to spend the money or how to save the money, what portions should go to this, what portions should go to this, how you should use or spend your money as a couple. It's no longer for the man alone, unless if a husband declares himself as provider for the home and allows you to use all your money on yourself and for whatever other thing that pleases you. But if it's not like that, if he has not come out strongly, uh, it's very advisable not to have this thing of, my money you know i'm a lady so it's my money moreover we even ask for kameza money here in uganda so it is very important for you to know that it's no longer at this in this, in this age and era where the economy is becoming impossible you know it's very hard you know in uganda i'm a ugandan so just take note of that better get into marriage when you've discussed such things in detail with a significant other so that you don't go in the mindset of my money my 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 yeah so that is one of the things at least that is more of a fact now it's no longer a man to provide everything yeah you bring your money together and you know you agree that brings me to point two when it comes to money and when it comes to marriage you must save a certain portion of your income if you do not save, you are doomed for destruction. Unless, of course, you have inheritance, I know, unless you're from rich families. But still, saving is a big deal. You know, you save for different reasons. You can save for children, whether you have them yet or not. You can save for buying land and construction, investment. You know, it's very important for you to save. You might be single and you don't think you need to save, though it's not advisable still, but in marriage, it's a must to save. I don't know of any couple that doesn't save money. If there is any, let me know in the comment section below. I would be so surprised that it's a couple, a married couple, who doesn't save. Whether they have children or not, in marriage, you must save some part of your income, some part of your, of your earnings. Yes, uh, sex is not every day. You know when you're still single, I inclusive, I used to think, you know, sex, you can have sex every day. But reality is, in marriage, sex is not actually had <laughs> every day, which is very normal uh, for different reasons uh, that I won't go deep into. That's more like a video for another time, I guess. I'll have to talk about it if you're interested in such a topic of why sex is not enjoyed every day in marriage. Let me know in the comment section. I will surely brave up <laughs> and do a video about reasons why sex is not for every day. Like, how come you're married but you're not having sex on a daily basis? Yes, but most singles definitely think like that. Yeah, I know you're there. I know you're there. Let me know. You're there, you're still single, and you're like, wow, when you get married, maybe you're saving yourself for marriage, which is a very good thing, a plus, a bonus for your future spouse, and, you know, you're living for the glory of God. So let me know if you think like that. Married people have sex every day. It's not true. The next point is parenting is actually harder than marriage. Yes. 
most people think marriage is hard work. Yes, it is. It's just hard work. I mean, there's nothing good that comes easily. Marriage is hard work, but parenting is harder than marriage. My maid of honor told me this statement. She was just, you know, mentioning it carelessly, but I actually listened and took it to heart. And I have a child. Yes, he's two years. Of course, he's still young and all, but honestly, parenting is a lot of work. These children, first of all, they're expensive. They are attention seekers. They, you, you spend a lot of time with or on them. Yeah, the little creatures anyway, so I guess it's very normal. Yeah, so children, parenting rather is harder than marriage. Like it's a lot of work. Children are a lot of responsibilities. There's a lot of things that come with children. Whether it is one or five, children, children are just extra, extra work. <laughs> And you better do it well because if you don't bring them up the right way and, you know, have time with them, have good positive relationships with them, things will go east. Or is it west? Yes, uh, which brings me to the next point. Um, children are actually not obvious in marriage, either soon or later. It's just God's timing. God decides when to bless you with children you can take a year, it can take three, five years, ten years. Some couples have had children even after ten years. So when you're single, you, you'll be imagining and thinking, you know, how you have kids, how many kids you will want. Of course, it's good to talk about these things when you're dating, but reality might actually be the other way around. So it's good to prepare your mind or your heart for either. And that's a good thing with um, premarital counseling. It prepares you for what if this happens like this? What if this doesn't happen? What if this takes long to happen in marriage? Uh, how do you handle that? So it's important for you to actually know that it's not obvious to have children immediately when you get married. Yep. So lower expectations and just rely on God. The next point is um, it's very important for the family of the person you want, you want to get married to to accept you. Honestly speaking, it is a fact that when we marry someone, we don't marry just that one person, just like this. Yes, we're in a marriage, the two of you, but there are other factors around you, and this is family. You cannot get rid of blood relatives. You're going to have to live with them. You're going to have to spend time with them, especially maybe in the holidays, you know. So it is important that this family accepts you and sees you as their own child, their own daughter or son. It's important. Otherwise, it can easily cause issues in marriage. And I'm sure you know quite many marriages where family has influenced either the marriage to be good or bad. So it's very important for you to know this as well. Don't just be like, I love the person. You know, that's enough. It's not enough for you to love the person. It's not enough. So pray about it in case you're experiencing, you know, resistance from the family. Pray about it. But please, I pray that before you actually get to the altar, uh, you've won <laughs> the love or acceptance from this family. Yes, uh, moving on. I hope you are noting and I hope this is important for you. Let me know. Let me know how you feel about what I'm saying, especially if you're still single and if you're married. And you agree with what I'm saying. I'm sure you have many single people around you if you're married. And so these are some of the things you need to tell them, talk to them about, you know, to just prepare them for marriage. Wow. Uh, well, in marriage, you don't make decisions alone. So never be there and you're married and you're like, okay, I'm going to get this 700,000 and I buy a hard drive. <laughs> I'm just giving like the quickest example that has come to mind. In marriage, you make decisions together so that you are, you have like a consensus so that you, because you are a team, you are one, you need to be on the same page. So you cannot make a decision before informing your partner. So if you have a habit of, you are, if you think or believe you're a great decision maker, you know, a critical thinker, so you want to make decisions and then come to your partner and like, hey, by the way, I bought land. Oh my God, lack of communication in marriage is actually a deal breaker. It's a big issue and it brings quarrels and arguments often. So in marriage, never risk 
maybe by just making a decision. You may think it's a small decision. Maybe you're in town and you find this nice bag of a hundred thousand and at home maybe you have you okay that over here living on a 50k budget per week and then you get this 100k and buy a bag on in one go and you actually have a budget per week so without informing or giving a call to your partner it might be an issue so take note of that arguing is very normal you guys when you're dating someone you think okay your world revolves around them yeah first of all Love before dating is actually, <laughs> I don't know if I should say different so, uh, from love in marriage. So when you're dating, you might never have an argument or serious argument. You think you love this person so much. And so, you know, you will never argue with them. Marriage has arguments and it's normal for a married couple to have arguments once in a while. It's actually healthy. It makes arguments bring you closer <laughs> however much they you know arguments you know like you don't want to look at the person you want to look their side and all but arguments actually okay you have two different people from two different backgrounds you have different uh, schools of thoughts you know it is very normal arguments in marriage are very normal so never think because you love this person so much you never argue in marriage it's good for you to know it now that it's very okay it's very normal but of course you have to set up the arguments you know, and come to a consensus, like you come to, you know, an agreement or something like that. Every day and all the time you get to learn something about your partner, your spouse. Again, when you're dating this person, you feel like, wow, I love them so much. I think I know them well. Even if you've dated for 10 years before getting married, trust me in marriage, it's like the real you, like you the shell is removed, the veil is removed, it's just like they remove the veils off the ladies' faces. It's like the veil is removed, so the real you actually comes out. And it's a good thing, because you're supposed to be yourself. So in marriage, <laughs> in marriage again, I say, every day you get to learn something about, okay, maybe not every day, but in marriage you keep learning each other. Even if you've been married for 50 years, even if you've been married for, I don't know how long, even if you've known each other before getting married for, you've dated for like 10 years, 5 years, in marriage you still get to discover this person. Because you're living with them on a daily, you're eating maybe on the same table, you're cook cooking food, you're sharing responsibilities, you have children together, you keep growing with this person. And you know, by the way, change is a fact of life. So character actually changes. No one stays the same. If I love rice and beans, it stays like that 10 years, 30 years. No change is a fact of life and so people change people keep changing people keep growing people keep improving and becoming a better version of themselves it's very important for you to know that the kind of relationship or relationships you're having right now opposite sex relationships it's important to know the kind of relationship you're having right now will be the same kind of marriage you have if you marry that person it won't be any different well, maybe it might be slightly different, but it's important for you to know that there won't be a big difference from the relationship you're having right now if you go ahead and marry this person. Let me give you an example. If you're in a relationship with someone and maybe you're always arguing like about small and big things, like every time you're boiling, you're quarreling, you're raising your voices at each other, even in marriage you will do that. If you're in a relationship right now and you're pulling rocks. You're not comfortable with this person. You're not yourself with this person. This person is always telling lies. You know, they are not honest with you in any way. It will still say it will stay the same in marriage. So look out for the kind of relationship you're having right now. Really examine and analyze the relationship you have right now and make a decision to either marry this person or not. But be sure that the kind of relationship you have right now won't be different from the kind of marriage you will actually have with this person. So may God help you to make the right choice. Yeah. Uh, well, marriage is a serious relationship and so it needs intentionality. If there's a word like intentionality, you need to be intentional in everything you're doing if you get married to this person. it's It requires you to be committed. It requires you to make... Uh, decisions together it requires you to plan together don't leave out your partner you know don't leave them out and then expect them to be on board like 
it's very hard uh as i wind up i hope this has been helpful meanwhile marriage is made of made up of two good forgivers if it's very hard for you to forgive someone when you're dating them maybe for some reason i don't know really but but you should just be ready to forgive in marriage you're going to be with this person for the rest of your life marriage is a lifetime at least the christian perspective of marriage is a lifetime so you should know that marriage is made up of a good marriage a successful marriage is made up of two good forgivers it is made up of two people who are trying to understand each other on a daily basis you try to understand the person you try to live with them you look out for the good and leave the bad pray about the bad you can't keep nagging the person about their uh, weaknesses just pray for them to improve you know just pick out the good and go with it make peace with yourself it was a person after all so yeah be careful before you get into marriage it's made up of complete honesty and trust in marriage you just have to trust the person you've chosen them you're going to work with them so just trust them learn to trust them back them up by prayer but learn to trust them it's also made up of mutual love and respect you both have to love and respect each other now again if you're dating someone that you do not respect you do not respect the person you're dating right now if you go ahead and marry them you won't respect them either like it won't change marriage doesn't change people they don't it changes people the real you just comes out so if you're dating someone that you do not respect i would highly recommend that you don't go ahead and marry them because why marry someone you don't respect actually when you don't respect someone there's a high ch higher chance that you don't love them as well yes um as i conclude i must say that love alone is not enough reason to marry so if you're still single you need to know this you need to know this and it sinks deep just because you love the person just loving the person alone is not enough reason to marry there are other reasons you need to look at the other things you need to consider and that takes me to ask you to watch my um old video about love alone not being enough reason to marry it was a conversation a very good conversation i love that video it's one of my favorite to be honest not just because it has na uh, a good number of views i think 600 something views but it's a very important video for you to watch if you're still single carefully and meditatively watch that video and i hope it will help you make the right decision thank you for watching that's all i have to share with you if i've left out anything or if there's any topic you'd like me to talk about let me know and i'll see you in the next video